Hi, it's Kirk Harnack with the Telos Alliance, and we're talking about uh, ways to use IP technology to remote in from the outside world, specifically the actual transport itself, the, the actual Internet technology. And with me is Kevin Bunty from Southeastern Ohio. Hey, Kevin, glad you're here. Hey, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Kevin, as I recall, you're a little bit less of an actual radio TV guy and more of an IT guy. Is that right? Well, we're kind of all of everything anymore. <laughs> all of everything. Yeah. Well, I recall that your expertise really lies in IT, and I'm just I'm yep. so impressed with uh, your work with virtualizing uh, different things around a, a broadcast facility. But today we're talking about getting people to do their broadcast job from home and some of the challenges with that. Uh, first of all, before we get to the the internet speed challenges talk to me about what you've uh, been able to do to get your employees to be able to work from home safely with lots of social distancing <laughs> so the first thing we did was we scrapped up every codec we can get our hands on right now and that that turned out to be a little bit of a challenge but we got that taken care of pretty quickly actually then what we actually did beyond there was everybody either had a home studio set up or we created one and one and where we deploy audio over IP, we actually go and take those codecs, feed it into the audio over IP system, router, whatever you want to call it. And we're able to go with the Comrex codecs, they have the contact closures. Mm -hmm. So we set it up so you can press one codec or a contact closure that feeds into the AOIP system and says, okay, this person's now going to be in this studio where they can voice track oh. or go live and then press this button and bounce to the next studio, and press this button and bounce to this one or go back to another. Um, that's been really handy so far. So we, um, we were talking uh, b before the interview about you've got uh, on air talent that does some live shows, but they also do voice tracking and Plenty of people do voice tracking from home. Small yep. town America, though, my radio stations, for example, sounds like yours, too. People typically do voice tracking at the radio station. They, they actually physically sit in the studio that the station's going to, you know, that the automation's running anyway, and record right. their voice tracking there. So you got to remote people in not only for a live show, but also to uh, your setup for individual studios to have their voice tracking done in those studios. And that's the routing that you've set up in there, right? That's correct. So um, you've had one challenge uh, with internet speed. Now, I live in, oh, yeah. in a good sized city right now. I got fiber here, and, and speed usually isn't a problem, but or, or contention or or saturation, as I think you call it. Talk to me about yeah. small town America, Southeast Ohio. Um, what kind of issues are you having with people getting live broadcasts done uh, without any dropouts? Well, it's a challenge, that's for sure. Uh, one of the problems that we have is, you know, I'm doing this over a cellular network in my car. Um, I don't have a good cell phone signal in my house. The internet that I have in my house, I was on the phone with the uh, service provider for over four hours. I have extremely high ping, really high latency, mm. and I still have no resolution. I can go down the street. I can see them running new fiber optic lines, trying to get it done. Um, it's just, I don't want to say it caught them off guard. It's just around here, upgrades are a little bit slower to happen than it is in a larger city. A little bit more on the high tech side of ways of doing it is we uh, we're using a VPN, specifically Open VPN. You can configure that to actually do a little bit of bonding across multiple WAN connections, mm -hmm. and that will allow you to give you a little bit more um, redundancy and. Um, durability into that connection and we've seen some pretty good results with that uh, one of our uh, tower sites that has a wireless inter internet service provider really good company to deal with really happy with them they're 99.9 99.8 somewhere around there uh, you do want that 100% when you can get it so we deploy it there as well and this was actually our kind of our first case test scenario we deployed this probably fall of last year. Little did we know we were going to be needing it for these other home studio setups. And we have it bonding with the uh, Verizon cell card along with the uh, wireless inter internet service providers connection. And whenever there is a drop because they're doing maintenance or something like that, it 
maybe a quick little glitch in the audio and i mean a quick little glitch in the audio and then that it's back to normal and it's just switched over to the other connection kevin as an it professional uh what mm-hmm. would you like to warn you know, what's the latest best practice advice uh warn other engineers or it guys who are trying to get connections from the outside world into a broadcast facility what should people really be careful about these days uh, the number one thing I see people still trying to do, and I, I it, it don't do it anymore, is uh, just port forwardings. Mm. Don't do port forwardings. I mean, there's some rare occurrences where you still need to do that, where you're doing like an actual um, web server or email server or something that you do want everybody to have access to. Mm you know, don't do that. Go to a VPN solution. There's really good paid options out there. There's some cheap paid options out there and there's free paid options in there. It all depends on how much time you're willing to put in there. Um, and what is, what does that phrase say? You can have it fast, cheap, or what's the third or good (laughs) or good. There you go. Fast, cheap, or good. Pick two. Yeah, pick two. You're not going to get all three. <laughs> Kevin, that's, that's great advice. Thanks for the word about OpenVPN being a solution that people need to look at and become mm-hmm. familiar with. Uh, it's a great technology and a good thing to... to uh, and, and, it's in, and it's included in so many routers now anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. already it might already be in your router and you don't know it. Yeah. Yeah. Our uh, office phones had uh, OpenVPN built into there. So we actually took our office phone for our, um, for our AMD dj mm-hmm. right who's also our program director we just programmed the open vpn credentials into there literally handed her the phone and say go uh-huh. she plugged it in and it connected right up yeah yeah i can dial her extension from my house which is set up the same way connects to our station and connects back out to her I, I tell you, this whole world of IP is amazing. So powerful. I mean, I've got I've got two phone. I got one phone here that connects to a PBX in Nevada. Another one that connects to a PBX. I don't know where in the cloud. And both of them are <laughs> are totally secure VPN. It's just oh, yeah. it's pretty amazing stuff. But you got to be careful with it. That's that's the point. It's oh, powerful. Yeah. Be careful. Kevin Bunty, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you taking a few minutes Anytime. out of your day. And uh, and good luck getting everybody uh, you know up and running. Great. Sounds like you've already got most of that done. So uh, thanks for keeping the broadcasting going. Hey, it's a fun challenge. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kirk Harnack for the Telos Alliance.